Spectacular spreadsheet students, we are going to spend some time on one of the most important topics in Excel, cell references. So we'll learn the difference between relative, absolute, and mixed cell references, when to use each reference type, and we'll learn the shortcut keys to quickly switch from one type to another. Your Excel skills are absolutely improving. Let's learn! Now I've created a starter file with some Netflix data that we could use for this lesson, and you'll find that in our folder, which you can get to by going to a browser and entering bit.ly slash excel starter files. Those words are all lowercase. Now this brings up a Google Drive, and you'll likely find more files in here than I'm showing you on my screen. Right now as I'm recording this video, there's only one file in there. But find the file that's labeled Excel Starter Worksheet, and right-click on it and select Download. Now, depending on your browser configuration, it may download it automatically to your downloads folder, but if not, you're going to be asked where you want to save it. I'm going to save mine to the Excel book exercises folder that I've got on my desktop, and then I'll find the file after it's been downloaded and double click it to open it in Excel, and we're ready to begin. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is save as, and on the Mac, save as is under the file menu, under Windows, save as is under the file tab. And when I save as, I make a copy of this file, and I'll give this copy a new name, Netflix Understanding References. Now I'll also zoom the size to 200% so that you can see the worksheet a little bit better. And why don't we start off with a warm-up challenge to make sure that you're on top of the skills covered in our earlier videos. So when you're done, your worksheet should look like this. What I want you to do is to insert a blank row above row 4, then add the text total below the regions, calculate the total of revenue, calculate the total of subscribers, format numbers with commas but no decimals, bold everything that isn't a number, write a line the revenue and subscriber headers, and auto-fit the column width for all columns. So why don't you pause? Give that a shot, and let's resume, and I'll quickly show you the solution for that just in case you ran into any trouble. First, to insert a blank line above row 4, we'll right-click on row 4 and select Insert, and then I'll format all of these numbers, so I'll select from C9 up to B6, and I'll click on the comma icon in the ribbon in the Home tab, and this adds commas, but also two decimals, so I'll remove the decimals by clicking the Decrease Decimal icon twice, and then I'm going to bold everything that's not a number, so I'll click and drag to select A1 through A9, and then I'm going to make a non-continuous selection by holding down on the Mac, that's the Command key on the keyboard, on Windows it's the Control key, and dragging from B5 through C5. And with all this selected, then I'll click on the B icon right on the Home tabs ribbon to make the selection bold. And now let's write Justify the Revenue and Subscriber headers, so I'm going to click on B5, drag through C5, and I'll click the Write Align button on the Home ribbon. And then finally, let's auto-fit our column. So I'm going to select from C9 through B5, and I'll select this format pull-down on the Home ribbon, and I'll select Auto-Fit Column Width. And we also need to total our revenue and subscribers, so in A10, I'll add the text TOTAL, all caps, and Excel has already converted this to bold for me. Thanks, Excel. And I'll move to cell B10 and click the Auto Sum icon in the Home ribbon. Then I'll click in B10, and I'll drag the fill handle to the right to add the same function to the subscribers row. So hopefully that was second nature to you. If not, go back and practice. But if you're ready to continue, let's get on with some new stuff. Now we're going to illustrate the concept of relative, absolute, and mixed references. Now we already know that if we drag a formula or a function in a direction, Excel will automatically shift the cell references, the addresses, in that direction. But sometimes we don't want the shifting to happen. So let's illustrate what happens and how to fix it by first creating a percentage column next to the revenue. And we'll use that column to calculate the percentage of total revenue contributed by each region. So let's right click on column C. And just like we can insert rows, you can also insert columns. So select insert, we see C shifts over to become D, and now I have a new blank column in C. And then let's click in C5, and why don't we add a header that's just the percentage symbol. And in C6, I'm going to enter my formula as equals B6 divided by B10, and I'll press return. And oh, why does this say zero? Well, when I click back on C6, the formula looks good, and the problem isn't the formula, it's the formatting. Now remember, we formatted all of our numbers to not show any decimals. Well, Excel used this same formatting in the cells inserted between these numbers, but we can change this by clicking the Add Decimals icon. Let's do that three times, and we can see that now we have 0 .470 in C6, which is correct. But even better, let's go ahead and click on the percentage icon, and now the default doesn't show any additional decimals, but we can click on increase decimals once, and we have 47.0%. And that looks great! So now we've got a good formula and a good format in C6, let's use autofill to copy that down into the cells below C6. So I'm just going to double click on the fill handle, and ACK! Divide by zero error, that's not at all what I want to see. So what gives here? Well let's double click on C6. 
and the formula looks good. It says B6 divided by B10, but now let's double click on C7, and oh, so we shift down B7, which is what we want to do, but we didn't want B10 to become B11. We wanted to keep it B10, and if we click on C8 and C9, we see the same thing. We see we shift both the numerator and the denominator, but this is a problem because the value that held our sum is in B10, and it's always going to be B10. So this isn't good because as B10 shifts down relatively, when we did our autofill, we get zero in the values below it in B11, B12. That's why we're getting a divide by zero error, and that's why these errors are showing up. But what we want to do is we want to stop B10 from shifting relative to the direction it's being copied to. We want to keep it anchored to one spot. So how do we do that? Well, we just add a dollar sign character in front of the letters and numbers that we want to keep anchored or unchanging in our worksheet. So even if we copy a formula or a function in that cell to another location, adding dollar signs in front of the letter and the number of a cell's address in Excel is referred to as creating an absolute reference, and it will keep that cell reference in place, not moving. So if it helps, you can consider it as absolutely existing in the address as stated with the dollar signs and never moving if it's copied or autofilled. Now, I like to think of the dollar signs as being anchors that prevent an address from moving. So now let's try to use this concept by modifying our formula in C6. So I'm going to double click on C6, and I'm going to keep my numerator unchanged, but I'm going to change the denominator from B10 to dollar sign B, dollar sign 10. Now we would refer to dollar sign B, dollar sign 10 as an absolute cell reference. And now if I try to autofill this function down, look at that magic. The calculations are correct. And if I move down into each cell, I can see the numerator is shifted down, the relative reference shift, that's great. But I see the denominator is anchored. It includes that absolute address with the dollar signs in front of the B and the 10, never shifting it as part of the autofill. Nice. So now you know about absolute references, but there are a couple more things I want to show you. Some gotchas with absolute references that might prompt you to use what we call mixed references. That's anchoring just the column, the letter value of an address, or just the row, the number value of an address. But first, let's make sure that all of these percentages add up to 100%. They should. So I'll move my selection to C10, then click on the auto sum icon, press return to accept the formula, and this shows up as 1, but remember, 1 is the same as 100%, so if we click on the percent format icon, we see, yep, it is indeed 100%. And now before we continue, let's autofit the width of column C. We can do that by double clicking between the C and D column letters. And now let's copy what we've created in column C. So this creates a percentage of the revenue for each region. And what we want to do is we want to paste this in column E so that we can get a percentage of the subscribers for each region. And we actually expect these percentages to be different because Netflix might charge different subscription rates in different regions, or the currencies may have fluctuated in the accounting periods, which both of these things are true. And we should see different percentages in column E. So I've highlighted C5 through C10. I've copied this, and I'm going to paste this into E5. And wait, this does not look right at all. Now, if these percentages were right, we'd expect to see a total of 100% in E10, but this says only 2%, so what gives here? Well, let's double click on E6 and take a look, and oh, our absolute reference for B10 remains B10 after pasting it to a new location. But what we really wanted was B10 to become D10. And we can continue double clicking on E7, E8, E9, and yep, that's what happened. So when referring to the contents of B10, we want our column to still shift relative to the direction it's being copied. So in this case, we want it to shift to the right. But we want to keep the row reference absolute and unchanging so that it doesn't shift when moving vertically. Now you can probably already figure out what we need to do. Just remove the dollar sign or the anchor from in front of the B in our B10 reference. Now anchor is my name. It's not not an official Excel name, but I think it's really helpful to think of the dollar signs as anchors. When a cell address has a dollar sign in front of part of the address, but not both the row and the column, we refer to this as a mixed reference. It's mixed in that it's not fully relative and it's not completely absolute. So we'll remove that anchoring dollar sign from the B when referring to B10 in our formula. So let's go ahead and fix this. We'll double click back in C6, and I'm going to remove the dollar sign in front of the B. So our absolute reference dollar sign B dollar sign 10 is just now B dollar sign 10. So once again, this is called a mixed reference. And that's because part of the address will still shift relative to the copy direction when it's copied, dragged, or autofilled, but part of it will remain absolute and unmoving. So we'll press return to accept this. We now have a new mixed reference denominator. That's B dollar sign 10. Then I'll click in C6 and I'll double click the fill handle to auto fill down below. Now we've updated the formula in column C, but the results remain unchanged. But now here's our moment of truth. I'm going to highlight from C5 through C10, copy this, and then paste it over E5 and look at that Excel magic. 
everything calculates as we'd hoped. The total in E9 sums to 100%, and if we start to double click in E6, we can see that the formula uses the proper cells, so our mixed reference shifted the column relative to the copy location, and that's what we wanted. But if we click on E7, look at that, E8 and E9, we see the row never moves because we have a dollar sign in front of the number in our denominator. That's the value of a mixed reference. So my advice to you is don't overuse absolute references. If you only want to anchor a cell in one direction, just put a dollar sign in front of the row or the column that you want to remain immovable. So this is great. We already knew about relative references and that Excel would shift an address relative to the direction where a cell was copied, moved, or autofilled. But now we know about absolute references and mixed references. So there's another tip I want to offer you. Since it's so common to write an absolute or a mixed reference, and it's a bit awkward to have to get in there and move your cursor and type or remove the dollar sign right in front of the letter or the number for the column or the row, Excel has shortcut keys that will toggle between relative, absolute, and the two different mixed reference combinations. And so let's use this together to demonstrate how it works. So let's click on cell C6, and my cursor, that's the flashing I-beam, that's the typing insertion cursor, is right at the end of the formula. So it's adjacent to the address B$10, and that's the address that I want to change. Now if I wanted to use the toggle key and change the first address, I could use my arrow keys to to move the flashing I cursor to touch that first address, but I want to keep it where it is because I just want to toggle the address at the end. And the keyboard shortcut to toggle between the reference types, on Mac it's Command T, and on Windows it's F4 or Function Key 4. So type that once now and we'll see B$10 becomes $B10. So we just went from one mixed reference type to the other mixed reference type. Now let's type the toggle key again, that's Command T on the Mac, F4 on Windows, and our address toggles to the relative reference, no dollar signs at all. Press the toggle key again, now we have an absolute reference, we have dollar signs in front of both the letter and the number, and press the toggle key one more time, and we're back where we started, with B dollar sign 10. And if you want, why don't you press your toggle key four more times, just so that you can see how you can cycle through the different reference types. So remember, Command T on the Mac. If it's useful, you think you're toggling between the four different reference options for cell reference types. For Windows, it's function key four or F4. And if it's useful, you can think that there are four reference options that you're toggling through, relative, absolute, and two mixed references. Now on the Mac, you can also type the FN key and F4, but I think it's probably easy to remember Command T. So now we've covered absolute and mixed references, I'm going to issue another challenge for you to work on. And your instructor may give you additional instructions if you need to submit this for homework, or you might do this together as a solution in class. But here is your challenge. First, let's set this up. So let's highlight A5 through B9, copy it, then we'll move down to A13 and we'll paste the values in here. And also let's highlight D5 through D9, copy this selection, and we'll paste it into D13 and we'll add the percentage symbols to C13 and E13. We'll highlight all of these headers, we'll bold them, we'll write justify them, and now here's what you need to do in the challenge. So your challenge is to write a formula in C14 that calculates the percentage of the total revenue for the USA and Canada, and the value in here, when it's calculated properly, should be identical to the one that you have in C6, but your formula here should have a difference. I don't want you to use a separate cell that first calculates the sum. To get credit for this, you can't use a total cell like we did up here in B10. Instead, you should figure out the sum as part of the formula that you're going to write in C14. Then, make sure that you've adjusted the cell references in the formula in C14 so that you can auto-fill the formula down from C15 to C17. And when that's done properly, the numbers should be identical to the numbers that you see in C6 through C9. But you have not used a separate sum cell, so don't include a cell like B10 or D10 in your calculations below. Then, make sure that the formula that you've created in C14 not only can be auto-filled from C15 to C17, but that you can copy C14 to C17 and paste that in starting at E14 and have the values calculated properly. And again, the results in here should be identical to the ones that you see in E6 through E9. Now save your work after you've conquered this challenge and follow any additional submission instructions that your instructor may have for you. Now I know you can do it because once again, we finished another video lesson where we've covered a lot of ground and learn a lot of new Excel concepts. We learned to be careful of percentages and non-decimal formatting. We worked with relative references, absolute references, mixed references, and we learned shortcut keys for toggling between references. I hope you feel like those Excel skills are advancing, and remember, always be excellent to each other.